I will show you a short demonstration of our library, Monadic Python Pipeline Library, which we pronounce as MPIPO. This demonstration is available as a Python notebook uh, in the cloud, so if you go to this link specified on the screen, bit.do slash demo, you will be able to follow all the steps that I'll show you now in more detail by yourself. So, first of all, uh, MPIPL is a pipe pip installable library, so the only thing you need to do in order to use it is just uh, call pip install my pipel. Or in the Jupyter Notebook, more proper way to do it is uh, indicated here. Uh, now, to use MPIPL in your Python code, you import it. Uh, traditionally, we say import MPIPL as MP for short, and we also suggest you importing the pipe library on which MPIPL heavily depends. So first of all, let's talk about uh, pipes in more detail. Uh, pipes are provided by pipe library by Julian Pallard. And to demonstrate how they work, uh, let's just consider a short sample problem. Uh, it's a problem number two from Project Euler, very simple mathematical problem. Uh, basically add up all Fibonacci sequence numbers below uh, 4 million, uh, which are even valued. So to do that, in a traditional Python way, what we need to do uh, is we need to produce the list of those uh, Fibonacci numbers below 4 million, and this is done by this function FibList. Then we take the list of those numbers, we filter out all elements which are even, and con compute the sum. So this is very simple. Um, in real life, uh, the data processing problems are more complex, but uh, the, the, the essence remains the same. We take some data, we do some processing steps, and we come up with the result. And uh, to express those processing steps, uh, here in traditional syntax, we would need a lot of uh, extra variables and a lot of lines, like code like, uh, lines of code like this. Of course, we can also write that uh, as a nested function with brackets, uh, but this is definitely even less convenient, because first of all, the expressions become uh, very long, and secondly, uh, the order of steps is actually reversed. So here we uh, take fiblis, then we compute filter, then we compute sum, and uh, this order is kind of from right to left, which is not convenient. Uh, let's see how this can be improved with pipes. Uh, with pipes, uh, we can use this beautiful uh, syntax uh, of pipelines. Um, the pipe library overloads the uh, pipe operator in Python and allows us to write uh, expressions like this. Take Fibonacci numbers, first 10 numbers, and display them as a list. And um, actually, if we execute it, let's uh, make sure that it works. Um, here what we did, uh, this function fib describes infinite sequence of Fibonacci numbers. So it will go on forever computing them unless we uh, terminate it at some point. And this is done by this take 10. So that's why the, the problem, the, the, the Python doesn't go into infinite loop. So if you want, for example, first Fibonacci number, which is above 4 million, we can say fib, then we apply filter where lambda x, x is greater than 4 million, and we take first element of the resulting sequence. Uh, this is the beauty of operating infinite sequences. Um, but we cannot, of course, uh, write as list here, because if we want to convert infinite sequence into a list, we will definitely get out of memory error. Now, coming back to the original Euler problem, we take Fibonacci numbers, uh, take them while they are less than 4 million, so whenever uh, value becomes greater, we stop. There we compute only even numbers and compute the sum using add operator. And this is the solution to Fibonacci, uh, to Euler problem number two. So what's beautiful in this expression here, uh, first of all, uh, it's left to right ordered and uh, it's um, very decomposable. So, uh, for example, here, Fib does not limit the Fibonacci sequence. It's the sequence and then we do the uh, limit in the take while. Uh, what's even more important here is that uh, all this is lazily computed. We do not store long lists of numbers in memory. What happens here is when we, when the add function starts running, uh, it asks the previous filter where for the next element, where asks the previous filter for the next element, and this goes up to the original fib function, which yields another value of the sequence. So in fact, it's very uh, conservative on memory, and it only happens, the computation only happens actually as a loop. It doesn't consume any large amounts of memory, but uh, it's written as though we are operating on some data sets. 
So this is called lazy evaluation, uh, and that's very good because it allows us to save memory. So in um, this approach, we liked it so much, we started using the pipelines and all our uh, deep learning tasks. But uh, what we uh, realized soon is that uh, in real life, we need to compute several things before passing this, them to deep learning model. For example, we can load image and then compute some kind of embeddings and uh, improve the image and so on. And then we need all those values. So for us, we needed to all the intermediate values to kind of remain on the pipeline. And that's why we came up with uh, MPIPAL. MPIPAL uh, is the pipeline which uh, operates on MDICTS. So objects which go through the pipeline are, are called MDICTS. They are almost like uh, normal dictionaries, but uh, with some extended functionality. For example, they, they support lazy evaluation of fields. They support memoization and some other strategies. So, for example, if I want to operate on some initial data, I convert those data to MDICT. For example, here I have a list of 3, 4. I convert it to sequence of MDICTs with the field name X. Then, uh, to compute something from the existing values, I use the function called apply. And For example, I can add to original number its square. Then I compute, uh, for example, some uh, filter. I filter the numbers uh, whose square is greater than 4, and then produce the result using the select field operator. To demonstrate this, let's consider the following problem. We want to find the first Fibonacci number whose square is above 4 million. So how do we do it using MPIPAL? We start with the Fibonacci numbers, which we have already defined. Then we convert them into MPIPAL sequence uh, with the field name X. So uh, we say MP as field X. Uh, then we compute uh, also another field called XSQ for X squared. Filter only those values for, for XSQ less than 4 million. And uh, we select uh, only the field of uh, original number X and the first number from them. So you can see that this uh, actually gives us the result pretty easily. And also note one uh, important trick here. When we have long pipelines, it's very convenient to write them in multiple lines. And um, in Python, uh, if you want multiple lines, we either need to provide special line terminator at the end, or we can use this uh, bracket here. So you can start pipeline with a bracket, and this does not. Um, this allows us to write without a special terminator. So the most important thing uh, which we often use in MPIPAL is the function called apply. So apply uh, here we provided. Uh, original field name x and the computed field where the value is stored and the function which does the actual transformation. Uh, sometimes we need several input fields. In this case we can provide the list of fields instead of the first field. Instead of just the name we provide the list of names. In which case uh, the lambda function uh, gets the parameter which has also several values. Uh, and um, to demonstrate this for example suppose uh, I want to do something with the files uh, with some images in the current directory for example i want to uh, show them together with the file name and the resolution of the image uh, to get all the images in the directory we have the special function called get files so it's very easy we just say mp.getfiles with the extension .jpg and you can see that i have uh, three pictures um, uh, in my current directory and uh, now to process them uh, we can use opencv for example, we can start with getting files, uh, convert it to the sequence using uh, f name, uh, using uh, as field. So now f name is the file name. Then I read, I open the image using OpenCV into the field called emg, uh, and I also do some color conversion here, by the way. And uh, then I select only the image and show that. Uh, to the screen. Uh, here uh, is, is another useful namespace, MPUI, uh, MPIPAL Utils Image, which contains a set of useful image utilities. Uh, for example, this beautiful function called Show Images, which automatically figures out uh, how many columns you need and so on. So this is a very convenient way to experiment with images or video frames. And uh, here, note this uh, pexec allows me to execute function Show Images on the sequence itself. So I don't have to uh, to write uh, show images and then in the brackets long pipeline. So it looks beautiful and nice. Now uh, if I want to do like something more complex uh, like over imposing on the image uh, the resolution and file name, uh, I 
uh, need to write a little bit longer pipeline. Uh, actually, what I do here, I again start with the file name, then open the image. Then we need to figure out the image size. Uh, and uh, this is quite simply done with the apply. Uh, then resizing the image. Uh, I want to show the images like in a beautiful way so that they are of the same resolution. Uh, this is done uh, using again function from mpipal called imresize. It's a very convenient function which allows you to specify only one dimension of the image and the other one is figured automatically in order to preserve uh, the ratio of the image, the aspect ratio. So uh, I resize the image and uh, I want to store the result in the original field EMG. Um, functional, beautiful functional way would imply that I need to use another field name uh, to keep everything immutable, but sometimes to save memory it makes sense to use the same field name and uh, to do that I can specify the same input and output field in apply or I can use the function called sapply. Then uh, the most interesting thing, I overimpose the text and resolution. Uh, here I use apply with the list of parameters and uh, put text uh, does actual imprinting the text. And then uh, uh, I select image and show it to the user. So let's see um, how it works. And we see that actually it does work. Here we have the resolution and image name. So this is kind of a pipeline you would normally write in your data processing uh, tasks in deep learning. And uh, one of the important deep learning tasks is classification. So for classification, normally you start with the images which are located in se separate directories, one directory per class, and um, you load them and you uh, like specify classes, you do train test split and so on. So all those tasks can be handled by one uh, beautiful function in mempipal called getDataStream. Um, so I will not go into detail here, but getDataStream can automatically figure out class names, can automatically convert them to numeric values, can do train test split, and can even save this train text split in a special text file so that you can uh, repeat the same experiment over and over again and have the same split every time. Uh, another typical tasks which are included in n to mpipal is uh, working with Pascal Voc annotations or in general with XML uh, input files. So for example, you can open the directory of XML files as mpipal stream and then do some additional data processing. And to look more into, in more detail how this is done, you can uh, have a look at the notebook uh, which trains custom vision model on Pascal Voc uh, image format. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, you can see very complex example uh, which uh, we, which actually led us to creation of mpipal. Uh, we, it's, it's provided here as a notebook and as a GitHub actually repository with a lot of uh, textual descriptions. Uh, also, another thing uh, is rendering video. You can open, for example, a video as a sequence of frames and then do some operations on them. Uh, so mpipal is uh, now being developed. Uh, it has some quite moderate documentation, but we are improving and uh, I hope that you will find it useful. If you use mpipal and if you want to know more, uh, let us know uh, and feel free to get in touch.